We're back. We're back. We're having, a, we're having a day. We just signed up for uh, Las Vegas FurCon, which will have happened by the time this airs. I'm I was sure. going to say. <laughs> but I'm just like, I'm taking Stephanie to her first FurCon. Yeah. Later in this playthrough, she'll have thoughts about being at a furry convention, <laughs> probably, because of this being a fucking year-long playthrough, <laughs> where we go through, like, stages in our life over the course of it happening. Well, I'm glad that pe <laughs> these, these people get to, like, uh, w w witness us as we advance through our lives. <laughs> I told my I told my friend, I'm like, Keith invited me to a furry convention. I, like, I hope I'd fit in. And she was like, yeah, you'll do fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, you'll be fine. It's fine. <laughs> you'll be fine. Yeah, you'll be fine. You'll I've be been right. to a lot of conventions, but usually I go to um, weeb conventions and horror movie conventions. And fighting and games. Convention. Oh, yeah, I've been to Evo, and then I've been to a lot of conventions where they have uh, spiders and tarantulas and uh, snakes and stuff, reptile conventions. I'm so behind. I've only I've only been to PAX West once and Midwest Fur Fest once, and it, but I, I started at the biggest furry convention ever. That was a lot of people. <laughs> I used to go to uh, WonderCon every year when it was still in um, San Francisco, but now it's in Anaheim, so it's too far for me. Yeah. But I, I love conventions. I like the crowd atmosphere. I usually, I like the, the musty smells. <laughs> That's kind. Of, that, was, that was a joke, honestly. I don't. I don't really like that too much, but it, it's a part of the experience. It's the experience. So I don't. That reminds mind it. me. We gotta. At some point, I gotta charge my camera and we gotta film a short because I was sent uh, Amicus's scent. In the mail, <laughs> yes. and I, I keep meaning to. It's been like a month, and I haven't even brought it up yet because I keep because we're dealing with this and so on. And you're busy, and I'm like, we got to film like a short, like a vertical recording short to make for like uh, us, you, like us, like, smelling yeah, it, like, like YouTube like... shorts and uh, and TikTok or something of like checking out, checking the anim the amicus sense. <laughs> like I don't know, gotta use it for content somehow, like. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that that I mean, showed up in the P.O. box, and I'm like, all right, well, <laughs> this, I'm just, this is the life I've made. I'm curious as to how this, uh, how people formulate these, but... Uh, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what to expect besides lavender. I have the... Oh, yeah, because that would be in theme. That, yeah, that's not... You they, need, like, sweat, though. <laughs> yeah, but they just set up over and over again that he smells like lavender, so that's got to be in there somewhere. Any, but anyway, this is Echo. We're back at Echo. Oh, yeah, sorry. Anyway. Anyway. That's, <laughs> that's our catchphrase. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, anyway. 20 minute digression. Sorry. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> so we did phone and run away, and then we went back to do gay Jenna, or gay with Jenna, gay chase Jenna. And now we're back because I think that I think these other ones might be more TJ focused, which is actually really uh, the, the next two that, that uh, Toaster said to do before the TJ route, I think feature TJ. So. Uh, if I think of this as seasons, then this is like the beginning of the TJ season. I'll air these like right before uh, the TJ videos air. But so that's what's happening next, I it's guess. It's the season <laughs> the of TJ. The forewarning doesn't work if it already if the time skip already happened for you guys. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna be playing date and lights. Mouse, where are you? Yeah. Squeak, squeak. It being called date makes me think this might feature Heather. January twenty ten. I, I kind of hope so because I like voicing Heather because <laughs> I made her my annoying Valley Girl voice. It's we my, also just it's wonder what these characters were up to. Like we know that uh, uh, TJ was a dumb little ghost at 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 the crack party <laughs> and got his <laughs> An adorable got his little ass ghost at the crack party. <laughs> he tried to hug Heather specifically, who was so drunk that she acted like she was being attacked, and then everyone thought that somebody was harassing Heather, and TJ was just uh, like on the ground crying, and somebody just dumped their drink on TJ's head, <laughs> like while he was crying in the ghost costume, and then someone knocked out Chase, and we never saw TJ again. Uh, then post time skip, we find out during like I think Jenna's route that TJ and Heather dated at some point. And then Which in, makes that more confusing. Yeah, and then and then in a in Jenna's bad ending, we get TJ gets to watch Heather die. Yay! So, uh, that, that's <laughs> revenge for that party that one time. Jeez, like it's a lot. There's a lot been happening here, and I'm gonna look real goofy if if TJ's not even in this, <laughs> or I mean if if uh, Jenna's uh, Heather's not even in this. What makes a good date? Oh, this is. 
already cute. Chase told me dinner and a movie. Personally, I think <laughs> I felt like having uh, the dinner half of the di- uh, the dinner half. I completely half of the lost my brain. Like I, the sentence is just not going where I was ready for it to go, and I completely dropped the ball. <laughs> Personally, I felt like having the dinner half of the date at my house would have been really nice. I mean, it's cleaner than any restaurant you might find in Peyton, and my mom's a great cook. No, TJ. Still, I can tell by the way that Heather has her head down that she's really unhappy. I feel a sort of sinking feeling in my chest. It's sort of set the mood for the night so far. Mom drives us up to the movie theater, and I start to get restless, noticing how late we are. The movie's supposed to be really good, and it takes place in space, which is my favorite. Did you ask Heather what her favorite is, <laughs> TJ? Uh, I think my first movie date ever was super bad. That's really cute. My movie, first movie date... My gosh, I can't believe this. This is horrible. But it's actually uh, The Love Guru. <laughs> and I hate that that is true. That actually hurts me a lot to think about. That was a terrible movie, but it's also, it fell right out of my brain immediately. I can't even think of a single scene in it It's all. It's just really bad, and that, yeah. that marred my first movie date. My first yeah, Super official bad was, Super movie bad was date. good. And, uh... I went to go see Up during movie date, mm. and <laughs> I, I just cried during the first 15 minutes, and I thought the rest of the movie was really bland, because I hate, I don't like that movie at all. Unpopular opinion. Really boring movie. I mean, it has, it, it does, it's hard to c- catch up with its own strong start at that point. Well, I was just mad. I was like, why did they do this to me in the first five minutes of this fucking movie? Yeah. Like, this is very funny that Superbad's entire credits are just a bunch of just shitty little drawings of dicks, <laughs> like I, wings and stuff. I think that sets a good tone for a date. <laughs> I like that. But the, uh, it was, a. Uh, it's the only time I've ever been yelled at in a movie theater was uh because we were uh we were sit- during the previews and stuff we were like we were like talking i like i guess too loud or something or someone but we were like like you know hanging out and chatting a bit and like i understood that obviously we're not going to talk over the movie but we didn't make it that far they were already yelling at us before the movie even started and like okay this is happening now uh and that's most of my memory of of going of watching that movie <laughs> public shaming. It's like when you honk at someone. I don't like to honk at people because I always think it like will affect them the rest of their day because it affects me the rest of my day. <laughs> yes. Any kind of thing where you think you did something wrong you just it replays in your mind for the rest of the day even if it's just like you misspoke at a cashier. You're like, fuck I'm ruined. <laughs> <laughs> my life will never be good again. Mom tells me not to worry though since previews usually fill the first 15 minutes. Finally we park and I hop out and hold the door open for Heather. I notice that she's taking her time getting out, so I wait for her as mom as mom goes in and gets the tickets. Oh no. Why is your mom coming? Her voice is a whisper. I reach out to shut the door, but she does it herself, a little harder than she needed to. Slams the door. I I stand there for a second, not sure what to say. Um, well, it's really hot out. Staying in the car would be too. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> he, has no, he has just no awareness of the, of the scenario. <laughs> Heather stalks ahead of me, and I feel that sinking feeling again. It's only now hitting me that bringing Mom was a bad idea. Not that I told her to come. Mom sort of just invited herself. Chase gave me a bunch of tips on how to make the date go well, but he never said anything about parents. The reason he never said anything about parents (laughs) is you're not supposed to have parents on your dates. (laughs) He never even considered the idea that that TJ would think to go with his mom on a date. He's adorable. He's 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 meeting moms like like meeting moms like four four dates in maybe. Yeah. Maybe it was so obvious that he didn't think he had to tell me. That thought just makes me shrink into myself even more, and I can feel my face get hot. I push my paws into my pockets and follow after her, trying to keep my ears upright. What? Wait a minute. What? Oh, I know what movie this is. Hey, gotta get... Whoa! (laughs) Wait. (laughs) Easter egg. Wait. (laughs) 
Ad Astra exists oh, in the Echo and universe. it's a movie about space. It's a movie about space. They're watching Ad Astra the movie. Heather might actually like it because it's not really about... It's not very spacey for a space movie. It, it is a romance. Yeah, exactly. Uh, next to your date's mom. <laughs> yeah, I wonder... You know that part where... Uh, <laughs> where... Um, Amicus and Nefru fuck is gonna be really awkward in front of <laughs> in front of TJ's mom. She's, TJ's gonna TJ's mom is gonna cover TJ's eyes and her own at the same time. TJ's like, am, am I straight? I don't know because <laughs> we don't know either. TJ, flashback to my mom fucking like during like family car rides would like memorize the, where the swears were in certain songs and like mute the uh, the stereo when they came up. Like not uh, like she would like she would dial it like she would she would dial it to zero right like so you could take the cookie and shove it up your. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what song that yeah. is. <laughs> it, 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 Did it all for the Nikki. It would just fade to zero the then Nikki. back up over and over again. <laughs> it's so dumb. Dude, my mom was like blasting like Rage Against the Machine. That one song that says like. Fuck you! I won't do what you tell me. <laughs> like, like the one that says fuck, the one from the like, Christmas special, like twenty-seven times. The hit Christmas single in the UK. What? Killing in the name. Of. Okay. <laughs> you know, you don't, you know, this is the story of that. No. Uh, basically, out of protest, being so sick of Christmas singles every year, uh, the U- people in the UK uh, managed to push uh, "Killing in the Name of" to be the number one charting song. And so they ended up being on the news and doing a performance because of that. And they're like, okay, guys, now don't swear and stuff like that. And so, like, I th- I think I think Zach might have like skipped like the first like earliest swear or something. But like, once you get to the fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. He's just doing it in its entirely full throat over and over again. And it's just like a test of like how many times, how many lines deep he gets before they could before they cut him off and and cut away from the performance. Dude, you can't, you can't. They not did. Sing- they, they cut away. I know, but you can't not <laughs> sing it because like it basically like what I I'd almost be like. I put the, yeah. I put the mic towards the audience and let them do it because I'm like well, I'll, I'll, sh- I'll show you the clip after this though it was fa- it was fantastic. My mom, it's just my mom like would, what did you expect? My mom would play that and she'd look she would be like you know which words not to say in school right and I'm like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think I think my mom was just being cute about it in that she would just like it was just like a funny thing to her to do because I'm like at that point I'm like I think we'd we'd already seen like Starship Troopers in theaters like. <laughs> They were, they were they would oscillate rapidly between like between being like the cool parents and the weirdly restrictive parents. It was uh it was where we landed that day. Uh, Mom's really nice and sits about five rows behind us, but Heather still seems pretty angry about it. It's an empty theater. <laughs> it's just them. It's yeah. just the three of them. Imagine. She keeps moving her sitting position, folding her arms, and making uh, making pouting faces. Each time she sighs, I feel myself cringe just a little more inside, and now I can't even focus on the movie. After about 30 minutes, she adjusts her sitting position again and knocks some popcorn into my lap. I lean over at her, whispering, What's wrong? She shrugs, keeping her eyes on the movie. I lean back in my seat, again trying to keep my ears up, especially with mom behind us. Oh no. The drive back home is pretty oh, awkward. Oh no. Especially when the Trevor Henderson creature shows up. <laughs> this fucking street is ruined. Yeah, see, I hate seeing this because I always know it's a possibility now. Yeah, this place at nighttime? It's a nightmare. <laughs> Mom goes on and on about the movie and what she thought of it, which is fine because I can tell Heather isn't in the mood to talk and I, I have no idea what to say. As we drive back into Echo, Mom looks back at us. All right, Heather, would you like me to drop you off at your house? Actually, me and TJ wanted to talk about a few things. Oh, no, sorry. They, they're both gray. They're both gray. Yeah, no. Actually, uh, me and TJ wanted to talk about a few things. Would it be all right if I stayed over for a little while longer? Sure thing. I look over at Heather, but she doesn't look back at me. Uh, I have no idea what she's talking about. I think I'd rather not find out. There's nothing I can do, though. So when we pull over in the driveway, I quietly get out and follow Heather into the house. How was the movie? (laughs) I am Christian dad man. He says it without looking up from the TV. 
Oh, it was great, Mr. Hess. Really cool. TJ Hess. She's using that weird, sweet voice she puts on for my parents. The cross. Is it off center? No, maybe. Is it upside down? <laughs> no. It can unfortunately. be. <laughs> That's TJ's bad end. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot of fun. I, fo I follow after her. Good, good. He doesn't even try to sound interested as he keeps watching the hockey game. He's like, that gay-ass romance movie. <laughs> Look at this room. That's got a shelves for all of his little collectibles. This is like the cleanest, most organized image in all of, of Echo <laughs> that we've ever seen. <laughs> that is probably true. <laughs> That's a framed picture of just the fucking dirt outside <laughs> that's, what, that's that's one of the backgrounds in this game i'm pretty sure dude what if it's just like you look out it's a picture you took like, from wow. the, there's like a window you can't see on the side and it's literally like a photo taken that's just what, <laughs> from the, that's that just what looks like in that direction from his house <laughs> i want to be connected with the outside yeah it took me a moment to register but i'm like i'm pretty sure that's that's uh, an in-game background <laughs> no it definitely is it definitely is what is even happening in this background? He has all of his books sorted by height on the top left. He's got a wizard man. Uh, the, the top left looks like some sort of helicopter, like some RC thing. Um, it looks like a little, like a, like one of those, um, I forget what they're called, but like, it looks like the top shelf has like some like Russian nesting dolls, like yeah. Matryoshka dolls, and like one of those um, spooky Japanese wooden dolls, which I forget the name of. Some stuff that's kind of just hard to see all, to th all together. Or all maybe the right, those are all matryoshkas. The right looks like journals. Oh, is that a Simon Says in the other, in the right top corner? What is that white thing with the colors on uh, it? I don't know. Some of these are hard. They're hard to make out on a glance. There's definitely a, sh a shelf that's entirely little figurines. Like, like they look like, like, like amiibos. Which I don't think existed yet. But in 2010. 13 years ago? I don't know. Yeah. Back when dinosaurs roamed the earth. Oh, he has a, he has a book for the SATs. I can see that. <laughs> I got... <laughs> I pretended to uh, use that. <laughs> Dude, I didn't study at all. My friends no, were my pissed because I did My mom got me a them. giant SAT book and I didn't... And I think, she, I think both years and I never opened it. No, me neither. I, uh... Every time I say this, it sounds like the test scores are incompatible or, in, or confusing or whatever. But like, I got a seventeen ten the first time, and I got a two thousand the second time, and that would that that number made enough sense like compared to other people around me. But when I say it in other contexts, people are like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Because it's like not some other they, they, they have some other memory. You that, took it two different years. Yes. Why? Uh, because I could. Oh, okay. I just was still. I'm still in school. I'm like, oh, why not take it again? Uh, I felt bad because the f the first time I took it, I already did better than my friend that had a scholarship to UC Davis. So I know <laughs> I so I know I did pretty well. Uh, like that guy was like a valor Victorian, and I beat him on the SAT on my first try. See, I never remember what's good, but I think I know I I think I got more than seventeen hundred, but I don't. Yeah. I didn't get the two thousand. I know. From, I, I know. From comparing, take it again, I know so. from comparing it to people that I did better than them on my, on my first try, like pretty much at pretty much everybody, basically. Me too. But uh, my brain was so drained, like, uh, like I one, I wasn't just ready for the endurance test that it was. Like you have it's to be very long. You had to very consciously force yourself to keep moving quickly the whole time because there's just so much test to get through for, and over so many hours that like it's just kind of grueling and so there was actually just sections I didn't finish because I ran out of time because like it, you just had to keep going 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 uh, so the second time I was just more prepared for what I was getting into and so I just fucking demolished it like I just I understood that I had to keep like reminding myself to like refocus and keep like the speed up and so on and keep like burning through this nightmare test of hundreds of questions and essay sections that those were the, part, the easy part uh both times i took the test i uh put my graphing calculator on the little cage thing under the chair that when they tell you to you know you have to put it away during the not math parts uh and then i just left it both times and those things are like 300 dollars. and so both times i so i live in i lived in a smallish town so i had to drive like an hour away to take the sat 
to like I had to go to like a bigger a bigger more important testing center place like no there was no local SAT testing so both times I got all the way home realized that I didn't have my graphing calculator and then drove all the way back and successfully got it by finding the right room again getting it from the person and so on but like two twice I had made this fucking mistake and the second time I was so out of it that I also locked my keys in my car at a gas station oh my god <laughs> like Dude. I'm just I'm just not in a, in a state that day after taking the SAT and and just burning out so hard. But I got a 2000 and uh, it definitely helped with fin- with the uh, with grants because uh, between the grants I got uh, and going to a, a state college instead of a crazy UC or whatever, and the fact that uh, was it my dad ended up married uh, marrying uh, a woman that's considered to be a disabled veteran. Uh, towards the tail end of me being in college, which then meant it meant so I didn't have to pay for college. Uh, a- after that point, uh, I managed to end up getting a bachelor's degree in in geology without any debt. In fact, to this day, I've never had a loan. Dude, that's fucking lucky. <laughs> I just it's, it's it's better. It's I mean, especially since I don't use it, it's great that I don't pay for it every day. That would fucking that'd be so miserable, and it's so, so many people's issues because they just like you just raised to go to college. And you're told that that's how you succeed in life, and then you like have to make important life decisions before you have any idea where your life's going to go, and then you're just settled with debt. And if you're lucky, you use that degree, and if you're not lucky, you don't use that degree but have to pay for it anyway. I knew people that were specifically going to become professors. That their whole end goal was to become a college professor because after a certain number of years, they have debt forgiveness and don't have to pay for their <laughs> the loans that they took to get that far in the first place. Like that's their exit plan. I'm like. That's dire that that's our system. It's not great. Yeah, no, I have a lot of friends with very expensive degrees who might not particularly like what they're doing, but now have to use that degree to make enough money to pay back the loan that they got to get the degree yeah. in the first place. <laughs> so it's like some never ending like hell circle. But um yeah, no, I never went to I went to a, a uh uh I went to a JC I say local after high school because my mom was really sick. And then I got an associate's degree in basically nothing. <laughs> I got it in humanities because I couldn't figure out how the college system worked because I was like the first person in my family to go to college, kind of. Like I didn't really know how anything was. I was the oldest sibling by like a long shot. So I like I fucked up and I didn't get priority and I didn't know what I was doing at all. I didn't I didn't never even saw a counselor until my last year. And then, oh. <laughs> yeah, because no one told me you were supposed to. Actually, I don't think I ever saw a counselor. And then, uh, yeah, and then I have that super degree that I've n- has never gotten me anything. But the only thing now is I'm going back to school and I don't have to take general ed because I have an associate's degree, which is which is good. I'm only See, going back to school because I found a way to go back and have it not cost me anything. So yeah, if it cost me anything, I wouldn't be doing it because there's no way in this economy I'm paying back any loans. But yeah, this so this is the this is the background scheduling hiccup we're dealing with with this with this series. If you're wondering. Uh, Stephanie is bettering herself and is straight up going to college while working and still has time for us sometimes. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> Your life is hell. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Uh, I do not. I do never. I never want to try to juggle work with school again. That was. It did not work. Yeah, there was that one day where I I worked uh, 4 a.m. to 8:30 a.m. Uh, went to school until. 4 p.m. and then went home, slept, and then got up and went back to work at midnight that same day. So like 11.59 that same day. Mm. Worked until 8 a.m. the next day. Went to bed. Woke up and went back to my night classes. It's a good thing you can just make yourself sleep because you would not get through this otherwise. <laughs> I don't I don't know how any of this happened. I don't know how the fuck you even keep this straight. I, I, I thought today was Wednesday for a lot of it so and yeah. it's actually thursday for the record in case anyone out there's wondering what day yeah you're course. uh you're so off the idea of there being a day night cycle that matters to your life meaningfully that like you now just like you treat sleep like a meter in a video game that you just do you just like periodically deal with like as opposed to the idea of like sleeping happens at night and my and your day has a routine of any kind yeah, I slept for like th- four hours four hours in the middle of the day yesterday. <laughs> I was like, I don't know why I did that, but I needed to, apparently. Damn. My body's like, stop. And so I just went to, I just closed my door and I fell asleep. Anyway. Anyways. <laughs> Our catchphrase. 
Heather's already sitting on my bed when I walk through the doorway. Let's see why TJ's in trouble. <laughs> She's got her legs crossed, paws resting back beside her on the bed. I stand there, awkwardly, trying to figure out what to do as she just sits there and doesn't say anything. Uh, do you want to listen to some music? I turn to my dresser, grabbing a small stack of CDs and shuffling through them. I skip over the Christian rock albums, feeling my ears burn a little at the thought of her seeing those. I end up picking out a, a Cherry Loom album my dad gave me a few years ago when he was trying to get me into, into classic rock. Oh. Heather still hasn't said anything, and I feel myself sweating a bit as I put the CD in and turn it lo down low. Finally, I turn around and see that Heather hasn't moved from her spot on the bed. She's just watching me the whole time. I twitch an ear and scratch behind my head, uh, laughing to cover my nervousness. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> uh, what's up? She gestures with her hand towards the doorway. Shut the door. Um, okay. I know my mom would probably get mad, but I do it anyway, because I'm, I'm a big boy now. I'm a big boy! <laughs> trying to close it as softly as possible so my parents don't hear it. That's when I hear the bed squeak behind me. I turn around and Heather is right in front of me. Uh, oh. He has no idea what he's getting himself into. <laughs> Dude, Heather's, Heather's the deviant girl corrupting the sweet little boy. <laughs> I jump back and bump against the door. Heather giggles and moves closer and I can feel her breath on my face. She reaches out and rests her paw on my waist, then slides them up, push, uh, pushing up my shirt. Her paws on my bare fur now. Oh, wow. Okay, uh. <laughs> I have no idea what to say or what to do. Heather just giggles at me again, pressing her fingers through the fur on my skin, and I can feel her paw pads against me. I look down and see that she has my shirt pushed up above my belly button, and she's starting to rub at the white fur that's been exposed. Just straight up the, the Lego Shiharu scene. <laughs> yes, yes. No one's ever touched me like this before, and I know I'm supposed to like it, but I don't. It's almost like I've jumped into ice-cold water and now I can't breathe. Oh. I open my mouth and I, I think I'm about to ask her to hold on, but that's when she kisses me. It's awkward, and her bottom lip presses up against my teeth while she pushes me back, banging my head against the door. I can taste the butter from the popcorn still on her lips. Mm. She huffs into my mouth excitedly as she pulls me away from the door, then pushes me down on the bed. Heather, slow your roll, dude. The mom's <laughs> right outside the door. I, I, I wouldn't be able to do this without being stressed. Just extremely ag just aggro. Wait, Heather. My voice is quiet as she pushes me all the way down, so I'm flat against the bed, my legs dangling off the side. She's really excited, and it kind of scares me. Her eyes wide and her breathing coming out in loud huffs. I grab her wrists as she pushes my shirt up again, but this time she does it all the way to my neck. She wants to see his little nipples. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you say it like that? Because <laughs> he's such like a little cute little kid to me that it's like... I just feel like she's bullying him. <laughs> She leans down and I gasp as she presses her cold nose against my stomach. She's so confident about what she's doing. Has she done this before? Oh boy. Oh my god, scandal. <laughs> <laughs> she nuzzles lower, then presses a paw against my crotch. I sit up fast and push her back. Heather, let's... Let's stop. I quickly push my shirt back down. Heather stares at me, then awkwardly stands back up, folding her arms. You weren't enjoying it? I keep pre uh, pretending to adjust myself, having no clue what I should say. N no, it was okay. I, I just... I'm just not ready, is all. Mom's outside the door! I know it sounds really cliche, but it's the truth. 
I finally lose the battle with my ears and they lift off to the sides of my head as Cherry Boom plays softly in the background. Alright. I should probably get going anyway. But she doesn't move. She stands there like it's like she's waiting for something. She's waiting for you to say not to go. I'm still too stunned to really know what to say. Do, do you need a ride home? That's the best I can manage. She sighs again before turning to the door. No, it's all right. It's only a few minutes away. See you on Monday. Oh, uh, okay. I get up awkwardly to walk her to the door, but she's already gone. I sit there on the bed for a while, hearing the rumble of my dad's voice for a bit, before I hear the front door open and close. Then I hear some footsteps up the stairs, and my mom sticks her head around the door frame. Everything okay? Why aren't you walking her home? I, um, she told me she wanted to walk alone. Dude. I feel uh... my ears dro droop lower. Oh, all right. Mom's about to leave, but then she pokes her head back around the door frame. Well, your father and I are watching TV. Why don't you come down and join us? That actually sounds nice, and my ears perk up a little. Uh, sure, I'll be there in a minute. Okay. She smiles at me before pulling back from the door frame. I watch the doorway for another minute, then sigh and lay back again. I cover my face with both paws, rubbing my forehead. I'm so bad at this stuff, why did I even try? That's when my phone buzzes and I take it out to see a text. <laughs> <laughs> Chase, how's the day? Winky smiley face. What a sh fucking schmuck way to write that. <laughs> I stare at it for a second, then on a whim, press the call button with my thumb. He picks up after the second ring. <laughs> <laughs> Why is Chase a tool? <laughs> he always, I think he still is, but he definitely always was. I know, but <laughs> this. Hey, B hey biatch, <laughs> your date already over? Hey, hey Chase, what's up? I can hear him adjust the phone, and his voice drops to, drops the lisp. I hear Leo's voice in the background, muffled. That DJ? I start to massage the bridge of my nose, closing my eyes against the room's light. Yeah, the date's over. It was... okay, I guess? Are you asking me? How was it? I wait a, l a while listening to white noise on the other end. I can hear some music in the background. I wonder if they're in Leo's car. Chase, how did you know you're gay? Oh. Uh, well, <laughs> speaking of uh, experiences of uh, taking women on movie dates and then being like, I don't know. Am I doing this right? Is this how I'm supposed to feel? Am I impersonating movies in this entire process <laughs> as somebody who is gay? Uh. I, hmm. No, I mean, I've definitely been on dates where I'm like, I have no chemistry with this person. Yeah. But like, like I said, for me, it's like never about, it's never about gender at all. But it's just like, oh my gosh, I can't like... But if you, but I can't, if you, but if I can't never, even. But if you never person. do, you're like, am I? Is this how it is, or am I just wrong about dates? <laughs> <laughs> you go on a date with someone, and then near the end, they're like, they go in for a kiss, and you're like, don't touch me. Like, I gross. still, I still wouldn't be surprised though if, if TJ wasn't gay, and just completely, and just doesn't know what to do. I do feel like he fucking Heather, <clears throat> Heather, shame on Heather you. was a lot. Yeah, you don't do that. If, I, if that if if if, if uh, roles were switched, that you know that like, you know. yeah. But we uh, let's see. Leo's gay. Flynn's gay. Uh, Jenna is presumed straight so far. I don't think we've actually. She gives off bi vibes, but I don't think there's any evidence she's. She bi. gives off bi vibes because that's what I want from her. <laughs> I think she gives off bi vibes because there's elements of her that re remind me of Stephanie. Yes. <laughs> uh, Carl's bi. Uh, Chase is bi. 
But we don't know TJ, and I wouldn't I honestly wouldn't be surprised if he was just Ace. Yeah, that's possible. There's some silence on the other end before I hear a burst of laughter. I flatten my ears, feeling my face flush all over again. I don't say anything though, I just and just wait for him to get it out of his system. What did he say? Leo sounds really close now, like his muzzle is right up against Chase's. I hear some more adjusting of the phone going on before Chase finally responds. What if he just hears like fur rubbing against other fur, like ksh, 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 as their faces rub together as they like clamor over the phone? Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I, I I just didn't expect that. Uh, are you on your computer? Uh, yeah. I I get off my bed and walk to my desk, waking my computer up. Okay, go to the website Thick Fur. I type it into the URL and press enter. You didn't tell him to use incognito. <laughs> His mom's gonna see it. Immediately a buff fox with no clothes on pops up, pops up. He's got his paws on his privates and he's sort of pushing them up. There's a bunch of other pictures too, but I don't have the time to process them as I jump and close the browser. I dart my eyes behind me, half expecting to see mom and dad staring around the corner, their eyes wide in horror. Not my TJ. <laughs> oh, TJ. Chase! <laughs> so, are you hard? Chase! Chase! Uh, we have to play as this guy the whole game. You're lacking some sensitivity. <laughs> we've been playing as... This is the character we've been dealing with. We've been the entire the, game. This character is... This is your character, Keith. All these people are friends with Chase on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, a lot of the characters in this game have some have some pretty glaring yeah. issues, so... Yeah. Chase is just kind of a general annoying, like... What? No! Then you probably aren't gay, TJ. You like looking at boobs, don't you? Yeah! I pause. <laughs> well... Wait a minute, don't you? Well, not really, I guess. This isn't you being all Christian, right? It's like it's like <laughs> where, where you like them, but they're covered you in hate sin. Yourself? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm fine with this stuff. I just I haven't really given it much thought. I guess. I guess you could be asexual. Ah, Leo, stop it! I hear the I can I can hear the phone getting bumped around again, and I think I know what's going on. What are you guys talking about? His voice is... What are you guys talking about? Is, is Leo voice... trying to fuck Chase while he's on the phone? Yes. That's or a least, fetish in and of the itself. Rough His voice is playfully accusatory, and I can hear more shuffling with the phone as, I assume, Chase tries to move it away from the wolf. Alright, TJ, I, I'd better get going. I'll talk to you more about this on Monday, okay? Okay. Later, Tej. Leo's voice is muffled, like he has something in his muscle. Dude, Leo! <laughs> oh my god. They're uh, busy. <laughs> They're busy. I know, but you can't wait for two seconds for TJ to get off the phone. Don't scar him forever. <laughs> it might not be oral. He might just be all over Chase. I know, but then what's he got in his mouth? His, his shoulder? His neck? Yeah, still. The, like, the, my, my, my question is still the same. <laughs> they're definitely on each other right now. Don't be now. trying to fool around while you're on the phone with your friend. Like I said, I get it if that's your weird fetish. Well, I think they were already doing it, and then TJ called, and Leo doesn't ever wait, 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 I thought Chase called TJ. No. Oh. No, TJ, uh, Chase texted TJ, how's the day? Oh. And then TJ responded by calling, which is like the, the hor horrifying way to respond to a text yeah. message is by calling someone. <laughs> And listen, uh, TJ, he's, he sounds strained. Okay, no. <laughs> I think it might be. Heather is, uh, well, she's not that, it's it's just not a big deal, all right? Okay, I'm, I'm going to go. Talk to you later. Mm. <laughs> what is that? There's a lot of implications of what he could be almost saying there. Like, sh Heather, like, she's not, she's not that great. It's not a big deal. Yeah, it almost sounds like it almost it sounds really mean. Like he's saying that Heather's not that hot, so 
it's no you might just not find her attractive or something or that or that heather's like trashy so you can do better and maybe it's yeah, just it maybe it's just heather's fault yeah but that was that's like a response like you can do better is like a thing you do after uh she dumps you because but no you do like i him. will do that when someone's in a relationship i'll be like <laughs> girl your boyfriend for some sucks. emotional triage <laughs> see ya I hear Chase start to snap something at Leo before he hangs up. I drop my phone on the bed next to me and hold my eyes, tempted to just fall asleep right then and there. That's our first glimpse we've gotten at what uh, Flynn especially constantly refers to, which is that those two were just insufferable when they were together. I see it. <laughs> I see it. It's the first time I've actually had a storyline during that time, as opposed to like, uh, the their their did their day at In and Out or whatever the fuck where they where they were like kind of already on their way out. PJ was kind of reaching out with like, a, like an important personal question, like, yeah. like he was looking, he was seeking like actual advice, and the fact that he called as opposed to texting might indicate that he needs some counsel immediately. I feel like I've as seen... your friend, <laughs> tell your boyfriend to fuck off for two seconds so you can answer this sweet boy's question about his date that didn't go very well, obviously. And you can just console him for a minute, because that's the right thing to do. Tell, tell Leo to fuck off for two I, seconds. I, I, I don't think we were ever at risk of Chase being somebody who made healthy decisions. I know, I'm just saying. <laughs> or was a good friend, given the events of every timeline. I feel better, though. Chase always had a way of making things seem alright. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Not through, like, emotional support or anything, but just, like... This is dumb. Shut up. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than nothing. Wow. You're right. My problems are small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he offered doing a double date with us, but Heather didn't want to, so it didn't happen. It would have made things a whole lot better. I don't, like I said, I, I would have I don't said, know how that would have gone. Yeah, I'd be like... I don't know. Also, if, was your mom going to be there during the double date? How does your mom feel about a double date with the gay couple With the gay town? couple that's all over each other all the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I start to wonder what Chase and Leo might have been doing. Oh, you sweet, sweet <laughs> angel. I mean, we were too, technically. I, mean, we, I think we got it right, though, so... He was probably nibbling Ch Chase's ear. Leo does that a lot. In front of us, too, sometimes. Well, the fact that he thinks that and he's the innocent means that they were definitely up to worse, something worse than that. Definitely just actually that's just, fucking. <laughs> that's just writing. <laughs> I actually think it's kind of cute. My paw drifts down to my crotch for the first time in the past few hours. I feel something hard. Oh. Oh, so he, he's, uh, he has to be emotionally connected to a person to... Oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah, uh... So his first, re so he suddenly gets hard thinking about Leo and Chase together, but he does because he has a specific connection with Chase and Leo, as opposed to random buff guy on website. Well, I mean, we might just need like he might need the romantic context, you know. It's like some people like okay, like you can watch. Well, part of the asexual spectrum is demisexual, which yeah, exactly. is when somebody specifically needs to have like they're they're attracted. Not, it's not just that they need require an emotional connection, but like that's what they're attracted to specifically. And, like, physical chemistry is just, like, irrelevant as far as I'm aware. Like, that's just not part of it. I mean, I think a lot of people, even without realizing it or defining themselves that way, are just demisexual only because yeah. a lot of people I know wouldn't be able just to fuck a random person. They would definitely have to, like, have built rapport and feel comfortable enough with that person to be able to find them sexually attractive. So, I mean, I think in a way, I think it's a really broad um, genre of, of people. Yeah. Also, as much as as much as Chase is a douchebag in the way that he's written moment to moment, it speaks well to their relationship that TJ was giving honest answers. Like he was just he was just responding to all of this frankly, as opposed to like defensively. Well, and he which, he asked him a very personal question, yeah. like about being gay in the first place, which shows like a trust. Yeah, so like there's a they have something going on here that's like better than you would potentially even think given how TJ is treated by basically everyone besides Jenna in every interaction ever. I think the moral of the story might just be that TJ gets treated like shitty by a lot of people with the exception of like his his parents who seem very nice and like a couple of friends one of which dotes over him the other one who treats him okay kind of. <laughs> I just don't think he's got a lot of options. Like a lot of people want to bully TJ. <laughs> no, not now. Oh, TJ? 
Oh no, mom! I jump as I hear my mom call from downstairs, jerking my paw back. Uh, coming. <laughs> coming! Not literally, I mean yes literally, but not that one. <laughs> I quickly sit up and slide off the bed, going downstairs to watch the rest of the game with my family. It was sports. Yeah. Mm. Biggest point against TJ. <laughs> sports? That's gay. Sports. <laughs> sports. Uh, what am I highlighting? It's this is such... There? This is such a difficult menu to do with a controller. And then... Lights. Well, hope we made it. Hope we made that interesting because we turned a ten-minute scene into a forty-five-minute scene. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> yeah. but we did learn about TJ. November twenty ten. Whoa! Well, he's at a club. This is a change. I look down at the cup in my hand again, trying not to make eye contact with anyone around me. Part of me wished that I stayed home tonight. But Sarah asked me to come, and I'd feel bad turning her down. She looked so excited when she mentioned how much effort she and the rest of the Bible group put into this party. Ugh. A Bible <laughs> party. A Bible rave. Uh, she said that after the recent stir a string of storms, the school wanted people to know that there was a severe weather shelter in the basement of the church. At first I thought she that it was going to be a bland looking concrete basement. But it turns out, Peyton's old school gym is beneath the church. It's a small basketball court with bleachers that fold back against the walls, and old basketball rims that are pulled up towards the ceiling so they're out of the way. Sarah and her friends strung up streamers and <laughs> from Twitch, just, just, just caught them just, live. Just and hung ninja from the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, just ninja captured live and hung from the ceiling. <laughs> 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 so stupid. You got some, like, muckbangers hanging up there. Like. <laughs> Sarah and her friends strung up streamers and lights along with all sorts of other party decorations, turning this drab bull gymnasium into a pretty par cool party room. A disco ball hangs from the ceiling, reflecting, reflecting lights over the room, while a DJ stands off to the side, taking requests for which songs to play. So far, mostly 80s and 90s pop songs. <laughs> Play Mr. Brightside. Jealousy. <laughs> a group of adults stand around the DJ, probably to make sure nothing too risque is played. <laughs> Play Killing in the Name of. <laughs> <laughs> Almost all of us are standing around talking or avoiding eye contact, save for a few adventurous souls dancing awkwardly next to one another. <laughs> I finish off the last of my drink and decide to head back over to the punch bowl. I keep my head down, avoiding eye contact, as I walk through the crowd. I reach the refreshments table. It's the movie the song restarted. <laughs> We've been taking too long. I, re I reach the refreshments table and ladle more juice into my cup and sigh to myself. It's the blood of Jesus. <laughs> I really shouldn't have come here tonight. My parents are out of town for the weekend, and I had to ask Chase and Leo for a ride. I figured since they were already heading to Peyton tonight, it'd be alright, but... Something about their mood made me think that I'd ruined their night. Oh. I told them that I'd try to find a, r a ride home with someone else, and that I'd call them if there was any changes. But they said not to bother. Chase said that they'd stick around. That... It's not like they had anything better to do. Huh. Uh, the way he said that made me realize I'd made a mistake bringing them into this. I can't take my mind off it now. I tried to make Sarah's night a little better, but ended up ruining Chase and Leo's. I feel like the, the way that that sounds like it was set up makes me think that Chase and Leo are pissed at each other, and it wasn't TJ's fault. Because if they but were it, going to Peyton anyway, then like... Make, yeah, it makes you wonder. It makes me think that they were in a sour mood. Anyway, like, 
oh, it's not like I have anything else better to do because my boyfriend never takes me on dates <laughs> or something like that. Like, that's what it sounds like to me. It does kind of feel, though, like TJ is just used to everyone being disappointed in him or him being like a burden in every situation. He has he has my complex. He's frustrating everybody. Where yeah. he just worries that he's burdening people all the time. The reflexive sorry to absolutely sorry, everything. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> now I'm avoiding Sarah, and I can't help but feel like I'm ruining everyone's night. Oh. I have to stop myself from thinking about it too much. I bring my my cup to my lips and drink just so that I'm doing something, if only for a few seconds. I end up downing all of it. And I close my eyes. I focus on slowing my breathing to stave off a panic attack I feel coming on. It takes a few minutes, but finally I can feel my heart rate slow and my body relax. Only to be startled by a hand touching my shoulder. Hey. Uh, hey! My voice is squeaky. She smiles a little at that. I was hoping to find you here. I was looking for you earlier, but I got caught up with Jessica and Amber. Her eyes dart around and she blushes. Would you like to dance? I can't help the shocked expression that I'm sure is on my face, and my eyes dart to the to the ground. I start mumbling out an excuse before Sarah reaches out my hand and pulls me to the dance floor. The cup I'm holding slips from my hand, and I lose track of myself. Everything seems to fade away as I follow Sarah onto the dance floor. She turns to me and pulls me closer and places my hand on her hip. I hope the music's loud enough to make the gulp I make from when my hand touches her dress. To mask to the gulp. To mask the gulp. I was like, I, I, something horrible one happened here in the sense. Let's <laughs> <laughs> do an autopsy. Sarah is wearing an off-white sundress with a red ribbon around her waist, and I can't help but stare at how cute she looks. I feel over overdressed in my outfit. My mom had laid out oh. my, my clothes for me before she and dad left. A light blue dress shirt and, and tie paired with slacks. Laid out his clothes for him. Yeah. And, he, and he wore them even though he had a choice to not do it. <laughs> and no one would have known. Sarah's smile snaps me out of my reminiscing as she waits for me to take the lead. I force myself out of my trance and take a tentative step right onto Sarah's foot. She squeaks and pulls her foot away. Sorry, sorry. Sarah just giggles at me while my face burns. There are a few more missteps before we get a rhythm down, and I can't help but feel and I can't help but feel kinda good about myself. Oh. At least I still have a chance at making Sarah's night and not completely ruining it. <laughs> her smile seems to have a way of relaxing my nerves, and soon enough I'm smiling back at her. The next song has a faster tempo, tempo, and we let go of each other. Sarah shakes her hips and moves her body to match the beat. I fumble, not knowing what to do with my hands, so I start to copy Sarah and hope she doesn't notice. <laughs> we dance together, laughing and occasionally singing lyrics to songs we both know. Every now and then we both uh, we bump into each other, which forces a few laughs out of us. Although I'm. Suspicious that she's doing it on purpose. Before long, the tempo of the music starts to slow, and we find ourselves slow dancing once again. Sarah pulls herself closer to me this time, until our bodies press together. She looks me in the eye and smiles warmly before putting her head on my shoulder. My body tenses, and I can feel her breath warm against me. I can feel her body press into me as she hugs me tighter. It feels nice. In that moment, I realize just how much Sarah enjoys my friendship. I feel like she trusts me. It's been so long since I've felt this comfortable around anyone. Not even Jenna or the others make me feel like this. I haven't felt safe around anyone in such a long time. Even my own friends. <laughs> I fucking especially my own friends because they're all <laughs> kind of heinous. Uh, what a fucking friend group. Yeah, your friend group's kind of uh. toxic. Dude. It's not it's not a good sign. This is a really this is a really damning narration. But with Sarah, it's as if I can let my my guard down. I feel like that's this is setting up narrative irony for Sarah, like something bad's going to happen. Yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm a, I'm a little bit I'm worried about like an embarrassing snafu yeah. or her just being really mean to him. 
I feel like I could do no wrong to her. I gently pull her into me, returning her embrace and smile. Yeah, this is, this no. is what I thought was going to happen. This is, this is the snafu I was referring to. Unfortunately, my body reacts to this in the worst way possible, and my smile fades as I feel, as my, as I feel my pants getting tighter. We start to step, step out of sync, and I can feel her torso grind against mine. I can feel her press her lips into mine. I tense and try not to pull my hips away, but that only succeeds in making matters worse as the angle changes and I can feel myself bumping into her. Sarah's hands travel down my back, coming to a rest just above my tail. What kind of Bible group is this? <laughs> no one's even stopping uh, them. You're supposed to leave the room for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> You have you have his have you checked with everyone? You have his consent, you have her consent, but did Jesus consent? Yeah. <laughs> Six foot Jesus pulled a yeah, separate. I was, I was gonna say she points up right up there. Jesus is watching. It's like a big <laughs> statue on the wall ruining everyone's mood. I thought the parents are, I thought the parents standing next to the TJ is just supposed to just just fucking take him out with blow, with blow darts for getting too close <laughs> together. <laughs> <laughs> just instantly, like, knock, just tranquilize them, drag them away. <laughs> Dude, I'm so lucky I've never been to, like, a Bible dance. Yes, yes. I have, I have avoided <laughs> this, and I plan to keep doing so. My entire body is tense, and I can feel myself starting to panic before the song fades out for another with a faster tempo. Sarah pulls her head from my shoulder. I love this song. She pulls away, and I feel a wave of relief wash over me, hoping she didn't notice or isn't angry about what happened. She starts to bounce and hop to the beat, <laughs> and I follow her lead, but she turns around and pushes her back into me. She gives me a wink over the shoulder, and as she dances, her body grinds against <laughs> mine. I'm just thinking about the <laughs> apple bottom jeans, boots, boots with, with the, the fur. fur. With the fur. Dude, that was like my, my, my school dances. That was like the height of that. If I had to pick one song to represent, like, me being in middle like middle school to, like, early high school, or I guess junior, I don't know, junior high. I forget the, the order in which these go. Being, like, a freshman, I guess. Th that's what that reminds me of. I learned about that song the worst possible way. The first time I ever heard that song was in the trailer for The Zookeeper. With, like, Kevin Hart. Oh, no. Because <laughs> a, an ape sings it or something. That doesn't make you want to grind. <laughs> so I had literally never heard the song until that moment. Yeah. So I didn't know what the reference all, was. All my school dances were like <clears throat> that type of song, or like uh, me jumping next, me standing right next to the speaker with my little uh, sweatband wristbands from Hot Topic, and jumping to like Green Day. Be jumping like, to Green Day. Be like me, me and my like four friends that were all. We had our eyeliner jump into Green Day, requesting the songs that like were not the hip hop songs at all. Like listening like, to My Chemical Romance and being like, "Yeah, this is the songs that we like." I remember awkwardly dancing with Pablo. Oh no! So McSkinny just sent me a message right now in the middle of this episode. Yes. Can you tell what it was? No, I don't know what you're showing me. <laughs> it is, as far as I can tell, uh, a video of somebody running somebody over in a video game. It shows the driver and then it shows just a random passenger, like a random pedestrian getting run over. Yeah. But photoshopped over the, the driver appears to be Sydney's dad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and photoshopped over and, and the. Oh no! <laughs> and over the. Uh, <laughs> the person getting run over is a uh, is Samuel. <laughs> oh, no, I, I I like I wasn't able to discern. So it's just a looping video of, of Samuel getting run over <laughs> over and over. Again. <laughs> so for context, that episode just aired today. <laughs> Why did he do? Makes me know. We're in the TJ pre-episodes. We're not going to think about that again, okay? We already had to relive it like five times when we were doing the gay route with Jenna. We don't need to do this every day of our life, okay? <laughs> every time we had to fast forward through again, we hear that fucking sound effect again. Just click. 
it stands out so much. It's really fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, I forget about it. And then I hear this. I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh yeah. Uh -oh. She sways her. <laughs> TJ is dance. <clears throat> TJ, keep dancing. Don't think about Samuel. <laughs> she sways her body while I try to focus on dancing, but I can't keep up. I try to move along with her, but I keep moving the wrong way. And I can feel my, my crotch <clears throat> grind against her body. I guess if TJ wanted to kill his boner, he could think about Samuel getting run over. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> unless he wants to... Unless he's going to discover some real bad news about himself. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, unless, unless he's got a little bit of a problem. Panicking, I take a step back and she follows me. The song seems to go on forever. You gotta use the waistband technique. Speaking of super bad. Yeah, I learned about that. I, listened, I learned about that from super bad. That's the first <laughs> time I ever heard that before. I think everyone learns that technique very quickly uh, when they have to deal with high school gym and the, the fact that they just they just cruelly just put you in fucking sweatpants and you I just was, have to just deal with being a teenager. <laughs> Pork swords, as Juno would say. That's that's always Pork what I think swords. about. Pork swords. She's like watching uh, Michael Sarah jog in gym. Oh, in and she, right, in, in Juno. In Juno. And she's like, Pork swords. <laughs> <laughs> yep. The music finally changes and I can't I can't focus on anything other than what's going on in my pants. Sarah looks at me, and before I can react, kisses me on the cheek. Thanks for dancing with me, TJ. Even in the dim lighting, I can see her blushing face. I'm gonna take a break, but I want to dance with you again before the party ends, okay? Uh, okay. TJ, better go jerk off in the bathroom. <laughs> I watch as she walks away, not realizing my eyes are on her hips until she disappears into the crowd. A tightness in my pants snaps me back to reality. <laughs> Oop, there goes, there goes gravity. gravity. <laughs> Oop, mad, but I won't give up that easy. <laughs> every fucking, every fucking time anyone sorry. uses that phrase in front of me, you, or Andrew. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the same. It's, hey, just, it's the most Pavlovian possible response. At least we're consistent. <laughs> if you wanted to make sure it was really me, <clears throat> that would be something you could do. So we have confirmation that TJ is not not straight. Not, not, yeah, okay, sorry, like, it he, took me he a has in, She has interest in girls, at least, and on some level, because he was, he, he caught himself following her hips. It's like, so it's like, in specific contexts, he's, he does care about this stuff. Which goes back to the Demi stuff, potentially, because we just went to great lengths to talk about these two characters' uh, relationship with each other. I, I am a little... Also, I think, hang, I think the background might be the Demi flag colors um i know that i was gonna say i'm a little bit relieved only because okay so obviously asexual people a-okay with me but I'm, i was gonna really miss the, the the raunchy sexual tension if tj was asexual only yeah. because i wanted to hear tj be lewd <laughs> yeah so the this is the demi flag which yeah. is which is black white gray and purple which is basically what we're looking at so it's like it's like setting it up a little bit. I have no idea if that's intentional or not. It's reaching, but <laughs> it is the it is the same. Maybe color. they just like purple colors okay. overall. I also just as, like as we all and put like everywhere. purple. I don't like the the bisexual flag. I don't like it because it's purple and pink, and I just I hate that. I hate the colors. Sorry, everyone. Is the, isn't the God? There's so many flags. <laughs> Uh, wait, the buy is like purple and yeah, it's purple and pink. I was thinking one that has like a yellow stripe in the middle of it or an orange stripe. Uh. The gay flag is like green or something. I always forget about it because the rainbow flag is usually used, but the actual, yeah. The buy flag's pink and blue with a purple stripe in the middle. I just, I'm not a fan of the color combination. There's a decent number of personas that just have the color scheme of the buy flag. They just, they just bake it right in and commit. <clears throat> Back to reality. Oh, goes I, I like here. that, um, uh, uh, what's, the, what's that comedian, the one who did Nanette? Hannah Gadsby. I really, I really liked <laughs> Hannah Gadsby's bit on not, not liking the, the the pride flag because she's like it's too busy it's like it's too loud it, it scares me <laughs> yeah <clears throat> like where do the quiet gays go 
<laughs> yeah. I thought that was funny. Like the, 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 gay, fa the gay flag and the, the rainbow. It's a, a bit busy. <laughs> bit busy. Pretty loud. <laughs> it's a very, it's a very, it's a really good special. I used it in the Lagoshi video. It yeah. wasn't the funny part, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A tightness in my pants snaps me back to reality, and I fumble to put my... Don't say it again. I know I won't. <laughs> and I fumble to put my hands in my pockets, hoping to hide what's going on there. Can I put, use the tactic where you you, you, you like you kind of te you, like, use your hands in your pockets to like morph the shape of your pants? Or you can like try to... like. In, using the inside of the pocket kind of like reach to try to like adjust without visibly like going under your own waistband from the top there's I don't I don't know about there's just that, logistical but... <laughs> problems caused by being a TJ I just when I was younger I just I just was always like how do boys ride bikes <laughs> That was always the most confusing that thing. That is not me. a conflict. That is not. I know. I, that, that was my first thought as a small child. <laughs> I look around for signs to the bathroom and make my way out to the party uh, of the party room. I don't like this room. <laughs> that's not like, that's not a party room anymore. This, I don't like this liminal space at all. The exit is a long tunnel that leads to the church. The air in here is damp and cold, and as I step into the hallway, I feel a wave of cold air hit me. I realize how warm I am. I'm practically panting. I groan as I realize I probably look like an idiot dancing with Sarah. My feet almost make almost no sound thanks to the natural padding. Actually, I tend to sneak up on people a lot. It's kind of funny when I manage to startle Jenna, although she's made a point of evening the score scary <laughs> she's very competitive the restroom is a one person at a time kind and i lock the door behind me as i'm going i remember that chase and leo are somewhere around here maybe i should go and chat with them i finish up and make my way down the long empty hallway i try looking for leo and chase but it's hard to see much in here I stand on my tiptoes, hoping to see Leo's ear since he's so tall. Nothing. I circle the room twice before I give up. Maybe they went outside? They better not have left him here. Uh, I, I just—I I never imagined that they were going to be in the party. I figured they would have done something else, just in general, because I wouldn't figure it'd be their scene. I don't think—I don't think either of them are psyched about the idea of a Bible group, <laughs> for obvious reasons. Yeah, and and if. <clears throat> It isn't like a Leo kind of, uh, like coded to be Catholic or his family. I mean, well, he's not religious. I think Leo right? has like, Catholic parents and doesn't like it. Yeah, I just know I've I I had some Christian friends who had some not nice things to say about Catholics. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, obviously, I think it's all pretty dumb. They probably have bad things to say about me. <laughs> so I made my way back to the exit and walked down the silent hallway again. This time I turn the opposite direction at the end and make my way upstairs into the church. No, oh, I don't like this one. <laughs> the creepy church. The chapel ceiling makes the hall seem twice as large as, as it is. Candle, uh, candles, sit line, candles sit lining racks along the walls. A few are lit, but most are not. An altar made of marble and covered in white cloth with gold trim stands in front of a big wooden cross. A wooden podium stands off to the left for the, uh, for the priest to give his sermon. Wooden pews fill the empty space in the hall, while a balcony for the choir overlooks the entire chapel. The church organ's on the balcony, probably so kids don't mess with it. Ah... The mm. worst background, the one that mo you always think something's going to happen in. I mean, there's a few of those, but yeah, this one's not great. This is the one that has such... Has, this, has potential. This one has absolutely crushed contrast, so you can barely t to tell what you're looking at. There's just a lot to like... There's so many shapes to try to interpret as things. I walk through the front door, thinking that maybe they went outside for some fresh air. No one there. I make my way to the parking lot to see if Leo's truck is still there. My heart sinks a little lower as I walk toward the lot, 
The thought of them abandoning me at my weird Christian party in, at the front of my mind. Luckily, I spot Leo's truck sitting near the back of the lot. Don't walk up to it. Don't yeah, walk no. up to it. Don't walk up to it. Don't <laughs> walk up to it. I was just thinking that. Uh, Leo loves trucks and vehicles and things involving them. Yeah, and tissues in his little glove compartment. And yeah. he feels very comfortable in, in automobiles, apparently. <laughs> Oh no! Right, even the tissues. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he just he just feels really horny when he's in cars. I'm like, don't check the truck bed. Don't check the truck bed. <laughs> so at least they're still there. But that's not where we parked when we got here. That's weird. Maybe they went to get something. I head over to the truck, passing under the street lamps. The lights are dim, and the lot is mostly dark, including the space Leo's truck is occupying. Oh, it's gonna be like not his truck. I assume that they just got back from wherever they went and are still in there, so I make my way towards the truck. I can start to make out that someone's in the driver's seat, but the passenger seat is empty. Oh. Oh. <laughs> TJ, turn around. Turn around. TJ, no. TJ, no. I can't quite make out who it is, but it has to be Leo, right? I can see a silhouette outlined by the back window, but something seems off. Like, it doesn't really look like him. I slow my pace and try to make out what I'm seeing. I stop at 30 feet from the truck and squint my eyes. Suddenly the silhouette starts to move. But not just that, it starts to morph and shape, morph and change and split into two. Hmm. The second shadow moves to the passenger seat. Ah. Uh, so there were... Uh, no, they were they, so they were uh, definitely on each other then. Yeah, yeah. I start backpedaling as the driver's seat side door opens, and I'm about to turn and run when the headlight comes on and Leo leans out. Hey, Tej, is that you? <laughs> I just imagine Tej being like, "It's a demon. It's like morphed <laughs> into two people." <laughs> Finish it. <laughs> <laughs> finish it it's like oh we were trying to finish it and then you walked up tj <laughs> i just i thought i was interpreting it as the passenger seat is full it's just that chase is currently leaned over yeah yeah no i mean i, I honestly still think that's what was happening i just think that like <sighs> when when he sits up it like becomes two people and so it looks yeah. like one shadow turned into two but i stop and relax internally chastising myself for being so skittish no you sure you're right <laughs> you, you did not want to walk in on what was happening here. The, yeah, uh, I was looking for you and Chase. Where'd you go? Kick. I walk more confidently towards Leo as I reach the car, and Leo closes the door and rolls down the window. <laughs> so put, put your pants on. <laughs> <laughs> Leo looks to his right. <laughs> you got a shameful look. Uh, Chase is sitting in the passenger seat. He looks a little embarrassed. And also a little annoyed. He has a jacket over his lap and his bare legs are sticking out from beneath it. Oh my gosh. Uh, Leo clears his throat. Uh, we just went for a... I mean, honestly, you guys should have stayed wherever you went for this part. <laughs> yeah. Instead of coming back. <clears throat> Chase seems to snicker at that. Oh, uh... Okay. I'm still not sure what they're talking about, but I have my suspicions. I look at Chase. So, uh, are you going to go to the party? Leo, Leo looks at Chase, who sighs heavily like he's just put down a giant weight. Uh, I don't know about that, TJ. It's kind of awkward. Not really a whole... Not really into the whole Kool-Aid thing. That last part comes out all mumbly and quiet. I flatten my ears to my head and ball my fists. Quit acting like it's this is some cult, Chase. Mm. My eyes go wide when I realize I said that out loud. Chase rolls his eyes and makes a tsh sound with his mouth. Just like in all of my animes. <laughs> yeah. I, I know, TJ. I was just joking. I clench my fists harder. No, you're not. You always mumble stuff like that when I when all I'm trying to do is include you guys. I I like angry Chase. Angry Chase. You guys like they need to be nice. 
I've I've always I've always had friends that were pretty religious, and I've dated a lot of people who were in Bible clubs and things. I went to a Mormon church for an ex boyfriend because I'm a nice person, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like you don't you don't smack talk your friends' beliefs in the same way that I would not want them to like make fun of me for my little being a little cringy edgy atheist. Like, <laughs> You just gotta like re- have some respect. You don't gotta like participate and do like the, the Bible group thing. But you, you can't like you let TJ be himself, and it's really cute that he invites you to this. This is a pretty benign event. It's just a dance. It's not as if like he's inviting you to come to an actual service. You know, we're they just, need to be a little just, bit we're kinder. Just constantly getting reminded this was never that good of a friend group. It was just they were just always so iffy. The uh, especially from TJ's perspective, it's like oh, it's the toxic gays. <laughs> These two just are awful all the time, seemingly. Uh, yeah, so, don't be rude, guys. Don't so, be rude, well, Chase. Just, sometimes I'm just like, Leo, why did you settle for Chase? Because <laughs> he's... Ca- At the same Chase, time. I, I get, like... Uh, Chase is cute, I guess. Like, I get his appeal. Like, you know, he's he looks like a... He, I don't know. He's sturdy looking. <laughs> he's a boy. He's sturdy looking? <laughs> <laughs> That ought to take a punch. He's got pretty <laughs> eyes. I mean, he can't really because he'd fall over. So it's like. <laughs> <laughs> he looks sturdy, but it's a lie. <laughs> For a bottom, he's pretty top heavy. <laughs> <laughs> you think he'd use that tail to stabilize himself, but he has not learned. <laughs> so dumb. Uh, it definitely, definitely feels like Chase sees. TJ has a burden, but also it's like, wow, there's a 100% saturation rate of these two fooling around for the entirety of TJ's stories so far. That's all they're up to. Uh, I just like. Also, it's just funny to me that like I, I know it's an economics thing, and it's just like he's not he doesn't show up as much as other characters because he's the perspective character and all that. But like I used the sprites of these characters to animate those little shorts and stuff. Mm-hmm. And what's what really stood out to me is that TJ uh, uh, Chase has. He never can smile. They never, oh. They've never drawn him smiling. I never. I didn't really think about that. Because he so because he doesn't smile in any of the story in any of these stories, and he's the perspective character the rest of the game. So the only time you see T, uh, Chase smiling is the group photo yeah, group, and like say. the and the, and when he's checking out Carl's belly. <laughs> like that scenes. And actually, most of this most of the Carl scenes he's smiling, but his sprite. There is not a smiling sprite of Chase. It doesn't exist. <laughs> so, like, when I'm cycling through his emotions to animate the little scenes, I can only ex- have him look angry or, like, four different kinds of sad. <laughs> like, <laughs> they, like, they drew him looking several kinds of sad. <laughs> and that's all of Chase's emotional range. <laughs> it's a rough time for him. <laughs> Chase glares at me before responding. Well, maybe it's because I'm not comfortable being in a place that thinks people like me and Leo are disgusting. And also be pretty fucking hot to, to to have sex in the in the the church parking lot. Given that, like the danger, like oh, they're gonna catch us. <laughs> Who in there thinks you're disgusting? You know most of them. You've hung out with me and Sarah before. So who in there thinks you're disgusting? Chase rolls his eyes again, and Leo seizes the opportunity to step in and raise his hands. Uh, Look, Chase, uh, we're here on TJ's behalf. Uh, The least we can do is stop in and say hi. Leo's being reasonable this time. Yeah, no, Chase, they were definitely planning to to fool around before TJ interrupted, and that's what Chase has been mad about the entire day. He's pissy. Chase mumbles something. Chase, um, Chase mumbles something again, but I ignore it. Uh, we'll head inside in a bit, Tej, and we'll stick around for a while, and then we'll all head home, okay? Leo's tone puts me at ease again, but I'm still uptight after what Chase said. Listen, I'm going for a quick walk, to get some fresh air. You guys finish your blowjob, and just, <laughs> just make it quick. Leo, sh- Leo shoot a quick glare at Chase before turning to me. All right. Uh, we'll be inside when you get back, okay? I nod, and because I don't want to have to say any more, I turn and fast walk towards the road, passing under the dim lights of the parking lot as I do. 
I notice my lungs fill with cold air, and a pressure seems to lift off my body. I wonder if that's what it's like to go through a panic attack. It sure felt like one. I think you, uh, I, th I feel like he should know what a panic attack feels like, because he was, like, consciously trying to stave one off earlier, as if he has experience. Yeah. I struggle to undo my cufflinks, noticing how shaky my hands are, but I manage to undo the pins and let my wrists breathe. I loosen my tie and unbutton the top few buttons of my shirt, feeling like I can actually breathe again. I look around at the long stretch of road that runs past the church. There are some houses nearby, but the road is pretty empty except for the street lamps. One side of the road is a rocky, gravel-covered hill, while the other side is, is flat, open ground with the occasional house nearby. I stand on the side of my road until the street under the street lamp for a few minutes more, and I don't really know why, but I take a, a step towards the darkness of Echo. As I walk down the road, I can feel the gravel shift under my toe pads and it tickles my feet. I force myself to smile. Oh. I try to think about other happy things in life, but all I can think about is Chase and Leo. I sort of disconnect from what I'm seeing, drawing into myself as I wonder why I thought it had been a good idea to invite Chase. He's always been kind of mean. <laughs> oh, he just knows it. Yeah. <laughs> but today it's even worse for some reason. He'd always been okay with me and my beliefs, but I guess actually bringing him here had been too much. Uh, uh, it's just... <laughs> oh, right. I haven't even read that yet. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just dwelling on the fact that TJ just has not registered what he walked in on at all. He's like... It's like completely not at all uh, a factor for him in his, in his brain right now. We just so instantly knew what was going to happen before anything was described. And then we were just proven right more and more. But TJ even saw Chase with a jacket in his lap. <laughs> and I'm like, how are you not picking up on anything? It makes me wonder when I've been at my own most oblivious or something. Uh, I stop and I snap back to reality. Whoop, there goes There's gravity. gravity. Oh, it's so <laughs> mad, but you don't give it that. I was like, I was like it's Keith going to do it. <laughs> uh, I've always been the... In, in Amongst my, my friend group growing up, I was always the lewd one. So I was the one that had to explain stuff to people. So, I, so <laughs> like stuff would happen and I'm like, I'm not going to bring this up because I'm not going to ruin their lives with this. I'm not going to ruin their lives. And just occasionally something would come up and I'd be like, I'd have to explain it. And I'm like, I'm really sorry. I have to explain some like it'd be something like like it'd be like Vor or something. <laughs> and I'd be like, OK, I have to explain this to you. <laughs> it's completely dark. And I look up. It seems like I've walked past the street lights on this road. I turn around and walk towards back towards the church. I didn't realize I'd walked this far. I can barely make it out from here. How long have I been walking? That goes up to some bullshit. I sigh and start to head back, pa uh, putting my hands in my pockets as I pick up the pace. I'm unnerved with how loud my footsteps are now. Each footstep is like nails on a chalkboard, causing my fur on the back of my neck to stand up. As I make it back under the closest street lamp, I check my phone and see what time it is. 9.30. I wish I had checked before I started walking, but I figured the party should have, have at least an hour left. I mean, it's a, it's a Christian party, though. I don't know. Yeah. You're back home at 8. I continue walking and go to put my phone in my pocket. I miss, and it tumbles to the ground. I stop to pick it up. The fur on the back of my neck stands up again. I thought I heard footsteps. After I stopped walking. It's Jesus carrying you. <laughs> Look at the story. <laughs> there's two sets of footsteps and then there's one. Whoa. <laughs> it's less fun when the one set of footsteps becomes two. <laughs> Don't like that part of the story. There were echoes, but something about something about a few feet of, something about a few of them sounded different. But it had to be the echo, right? Yeah, the echo. Oh, a CG. Oh, that's... I don't like... That creeps me out. That was very, like... That picture. No. <laughs> what? The sign. Oh my gosh, you scared me. I thought you saw something that I didn't see. <laughs> and I was like, what is it? What is it? 
Look at spooked TJ. God, he, he looks so pretty. That's a lot of mane. He's really like he, I like this picture of him. He he's looks very handsome. He's extremely lynx. Yeah, I was not expecting these to any of these to have CGs. There's a lot of staples and stuff, and then they, there's even the detail that the staples are like leeching from the rain. I mean, or it could be shadow from the street lamp above it. Uh, they wouldn't be that star that harsh though. I don't think. I don't know. I think it's the uh, the like the 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 rust. The, yeah, the rain like makes the all the staples le leach over time because just there's just so many and then they never get taken out. No. <laughs> 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 it's a really big no with no like the font changes so quickly that you can't tell what it is at all I stand up and look behind me but I don't see anything I squint my eyes looking into the blackness but I can't make anything out I listen for anything and I think I can hear breathing but when I try to focus on it a steady high pitched ringing starts to build the more I try to focus the louder it gets I try to focus on anything other than that sound, but there's nothing to hear. It's gotten so loud that I don't think I'd be able to hear a jet engine at this point. The hum. I feel my lungs start to burn, and I release the breath I hadn't realized I was holding. I was so focused on hearing something, anything other than that ringing, that I'd ignored everything else. I inhale, the night air pierced by the sound of my breath being released. I must be going crazy. I take one last look around and start back towards the church again. But once I step out of the light, I swear I hear the footsteps starting behind me again. I focus on steadying my breathing and listening for any out of place sounds again. I keep my head low and try to catch a glimpse of anything out of the corner of my eyes. I look ahead to see how far I am from the church and my heart sinks. I'm not even close. I look towards the houses on the side of the road, but only one remains between me and the church, and it's still a few street lamps away. Even in the dark I can see it's a dilapidated mess, and no lights shine from inside it. There are trees growing all around it, and overtaking what's left of the house. I consider running, and hiding in there, but there's no guarantee that the doors are unlocked. Or worse yet, maybe that's the person who's follow where the maybe that's the person who's following me lives. That's where missing, the... Yeah, yeah, missing a word. Just... Just keep walking. I can't see anyone, so it, it might be all in my head. Even if it is someone following me, who's to say I, it isn't someone from the church? That'd make them a good person, right? <laughs> mm, that's an interesting leap. I made it under the, another streetlight. And then another. I pass under two before I make it in... I make it in front of the dilapidated house. Then I he hear ragged breathing coming from behind me, and I spin around with a yelp. But there's no one there. A whine escapes my throat as I look into the darkness. Shouldn't I be relieved that no one's there? But I can still hear that ragged breathing. It sounds like it's coming from everywhere. I can hear it to my left, but I can't see anything. I look to my right, but I don't see anything. I spin around, looking in all directions, but I can't see anything. I turn my back towards the light pole, and I slowly back up. Tears fill my eyes. <laughs> Hello? Is there anyone there? This isn't funny. I jump in surprise when my back touches the light pole. I can hear his ragged breath coming from my right and moving to the left, just outside of the light. I shift on my feet, and I can hear the fo his footsteps echoing in the darkness. Hello? That's when I see something. I think I can see him moving around in the darkness, a tall, lanky figure. He bends down and starts to walk on all fours. No! But what I can see- but what I can make out disappears into the darkness again. He- It? Can be heard pacing around me as it starts to come closer to the light pole. I turn and back myself into the middle of the shining light. I hug my arms to my chest and whisper, oh, the screen's changing colors. I don't know where it is anymore. Whatever it is. I try to listen again, but that terrible ringing pierces my ears. I feel my face scrunch up, and tears run down my cheeks. I feel another whisper escape my throat, and I look around into the night. I look back towards Echo, and I see a car driving towards me. I feel a sense of hope wash over me. I start to look around, 
making sure the thing isn't going to grab me out of the shadows. I start to wave down the car, but, but as it pulls closer, the lights dim, and I can see into it. My heart sinks, and I back away towards the light pole as I glimpse the silhouette of horns in the driver's seat and a bright red eye looking back at me. I stumble backwards away from the car. It pulls up next to me and rolls the window down. TJ? Carl? Thought it was the devil or something. I see red eyes. I was like, I, was yeah. like, I first thought it was Carl, but then I was like, red eyes? I'm like, he's high as fuck. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Immediately, I figured it was Carl. Carl nods in a manner that says, the one and only. He pulls a cigarette out of his mouth. <laughs> TJ! TJ. What are you doing? I let out a sigh of relief and rush forward, grabbing at the door handle. Whoa there, Tej. I gotta unlock the door first. It's back when he drove. Oh yeah? Before his accident. I fiddle with the handle and Carl tells me to stop so he can open the door. I force myself to let go and look around, afraid that something is going to jump out at me right before I can reach safety. I can smell something bad in the air now. Like someone who hasn't bathed in months, or a rotting dead animal. That's just the dank weed. It's closer now. I hear the doors click open and I scramble for the handle again. I can hear Carl mention something, mention the door being open, and that I can sit in the front if I'd like, but I ignore him. Too focused on getting inside the car, because he doesn't want to go around the car to the other yeah. side. Yeah. Yanking on the door, I step back to make room for it uh, to swing outward. In that moment, I feel a presence and, and my hair raises on my neck. I rush to get into the back seat, and as I look down for the step, I swear I can see a shadowy hand reaching from under the car. I quickly jump in the back seat and slam the door shut. Carl looks back at me with a smile. What are you doing out here, Tej? You feeling alright? Without looking at him, I mumble something about needing a walk. I'm still too busy checking to make sure nothing is waiting outside the car or watch, or watching us or trying to get in. I feel a shifting in my seat and the car starts to move. I take a deep bre inward breath and let out a sigh of relief. I turn and look back over my shoulder at where I was trapped a few minutes, moments ago. I blink a few times to clear my eyes, and I can blurrily see the silhouette of a lanky, misshapen person standing just outside the light. Do you think it's the red man? Yeah. Or the spindly black Yeah, the road thingy. one. Aren't we in Peyton? I, thought this was like, I, thought, I didn't think the rules that accounted for this possibility. Yeah, but he was looking at Echo from the darkness. Oh. So I think... Well, and then also they're saying that they were going to Peyton. It doesn't mean that they actually, like... That Chase and oh, yeah. Leo were, were heading going, to Peyton. Yeah, because he's walking back to Echo still. Yeah. So there's the yeah. <laughs> they were on their way to a different town. Like you you fucked up their day. No, I mean if they were on the way and they're passing it, they should just drop them off. I don't yeah. know why they're being such little pissy bitches. Should have talked to Carl. Yeah, Carl would have drove you. But we pulled too far away for me to make anything out clearly. I turn back around and lean my head back and back into the headrest and close my eyes, feeling them well up with tears. I jump when Carl starts talking again. So, TJ, what the heck were you doing out here anyway? Did something happen? Uh, I need to clear my mind, so I went for a walk. All the way out here? I was at the church. I point out the window to the side of the car. It would be on, but we're already past it and into Peyton. I think about telling him what just happened, but... I can't figure out how to explain it right now. <clears throat> Carl keeps asking me questions all the while I tell him about my evening, the party, Sarah, Chase and Leo. I leave out everything that I leave out everything that happened after I left the church for reasons I can't explain. I decide to focus on the part with Chase getting on my nerves, and he just laughs it off, saying, "That's just how Chase and Leo are." He asks if he should drop me off back at the church, and I tell him no. Almost too quickly. I don't want to go back there. But I don't want to be alone. So instead I ask him if I can go over to his place for a bit. He replies with an ecstatic, Of course! Of course! And I, me <laughs> and I <clears throat> message Leo and Chase to let them know. They're going to be pissed. Yeah. <laughs> Chase is going to be so mad now. He, he also ghosted them now. 
He mentions that he was going into Peyton to buy a new game that's just come out. He laughs, saying he hopes I don't mind if we have, a, have to wait a bit for it. I mumble that's, that that's fine, as long as the place we're going is well lit. <laughs> oh, poor TJ. Yeah, the, my, my, my perceptions of these characters have shifted over time, and the person who I thought I was going to like the least, which was TJ, is now one of my favorites, because no. everyone else has just become increasingly <laughs> more heinous over time. And now we get to explore the TJ route, though, next. Here it comes. And I don't... I, see how that goes. That makes me worried, because I I, I, I know bad things will happen to him. <laughs> They have to, yeah. But he started the night fearing he was ruining everyone's evening. And he was kind of ruining chases, but mostly he was doing fine. They could but have had a nice time if but they were this, open to it. At this point, he's ruined everything. Like, after he did, after saying, after worrying that, he then did kind of ruin Sarah and chases in Leo's evening. <laughs> by interrupting their sex and ghosting them after, after guilting them into going into the church. And then he just ghosts Sarah after they're going to dance again. He them. Like, well, like, I, I don't know. I think that they're just being... But he ghosted Sarah. Well, yeah, he can just explain just that gone. later. It'll be okay. <laughs> it was the demons. None of this is, is TJ's yeah. fault. As a tiny side note, just I, uh, I've, I've been corrected at some point. Is that I, although I haven't looked into myself, so if they're wrong, then if this is wrong, then they're wrong, and it's their fault. Uh, I thought that this whole game was written by two people, but the, the exception is that, as far as I heard, I think all of the side stories are written by Red which is somebody who worked on the smoke room and is now working on the glory hounds superhero game. A lot so, of hands. All, so all these stories are written by a different writer than the two writers that write the entire main game. So that's a surprise. Something to keep in mind. Yeah. But anyway, see you guys next time. Stephanie's got to run out the door. Yeah. I got to go to school. <laughs> Bye.